What's up? It's Jean-Claude and I'm back. And today what we're going to be doing is finally getting started on washing and decontaminating the Daytona Violet M3. What does washing and decontaminating mean? Well, we know what washing means, so we're not going to go over that. But decontaminating means essentially we're going to make sure that we don't have anything on top of the clear coat. So no bonded contaminants. We're going to make sure we don't have obviously any dirt, any loose debris sitting on the car. And we're also going to make sure that any of those substances that would be left over from any compounding, polishing, anything that uh, the factory would do to the car, uh, that we don't have any of those oils left over because they're going to artificially enhance the paint. They're going to interfere with our ability to correct the paint. And it's also going to, more importantly, it's going to affect our ability to properly assess where the paint is before we start the paint correction. That means we're going to start with a chemical decon and as necessary do a mechanical decon. We're also going to show you what the difference is in terms of why we would want to start with a chemical decontamination and hopefully we don't have to do a mechanical and i don't believe that it's necessary for me to do a mechanical decon on this car once we're done with the paint correction we're going to start moving towards getting the satin paint protection film on the car after washing it again in the meantime the wheels tires we're not going to touch those they're going to be coming off and we've got something else special planned for those and uh, that's pretty much it. We're going to focus on the paint. We're going to hold off on pulling off a bunch of stuff from the car, like some of the trim pieces that would need to come off for us to do our cell wrap. We're going to hold off on those for now and just focus on getting this thing cleaned up. So follow along. Hope you have a good time. And we'll see you here in a little bit. When it comes to working on paint as a degreaser, and really the first step of decontamination for the last 10 years, I've been a big vo vocal, uh, what is it, proponent of P21S, Total Auto Wash. And this is a great citrus-based degreaser. You don't have to use it full concentration. You can cut it. And in this case, um, I'm gonna start with a full concentration on the paint, and I'm gonna be using my Gardena pump sprayer. These are great. They're not inexpensive. I don't remember exactly how much I spent on this. I want to say it was 60 or 70 bucks, something like that. And I purchased one and it turns out I like them so much and my guys like them so much. We bought, I think, I've, I think I've got six or seven of them for commonly used products. And the reason I like to use a pump sprayer more so than a foamer, and we do have foamers too, nothing wrong with foamers, but I like the pump sprayers because you get a more economical, uh, it's a more economical approach to using chemicals, especially when you're dealing with expensive chemicals. Uh, it's true, time is valuable, but it really does not take long to use a pump sprayer and treat a whole body of a car. And I feel like I have a little bit better of a touch when it comes to how I'm going to cut it. Uh, at any rate, um, the Gardenia, uh, Gardenia, the Gardena pump sprayer is great, and uh, uh, anything that we use, I will share a link down below. Uh, if you're interested in purchasing it, feel free to. There's plenty of vendors online that sell all of this stuff. So you don't have to go to my links. Um, you can go anywhere you want. This is before um, the decon, but we already have right here some pretty apparent defects. You can see some pretty wild haze from about here to about here. Let me get this back in focus. Here it is, starting here over to so uh, that's not a huge deal but we can see some marring in the paint if I can keep this in focus some holograms more marring scratches there's some heavier there was a heavier scratch hiding over here there it is 
right there. We've got some holograms on the front end. Let's see if we can pick it up here. Let's see. This might be another one that's a little easier to pick up outside. There we go. We're seeing some of it here. This is before we've decontaminated the paint. Let's see what pops up after the decon is done here. I haven't inspected the bumper yet. Um, a lot of this stuff, it's, it's just a matter of like, you know, hey, it is what it is. There's gonna be stuff that shows up. Not a lot you can do about it. Uh, in the meantime, looks like we've got another piece of trash in the paint. Let's see if I can locate it here. I just saw it off camera. Right here. Another speck of trash in the clear coat. We'll get that fixed. Not a huge deal. I mean, there's plenty of them in the car. Um, plenty of pieces of trash to be cleaned up. But this is before we have, there's another gnarly one. Actually, I'm gonna pull the light away. There it is. Another piece of trash right there. That's what in the clear coat. Go back, 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 back. to wash is uh, predominantly going to be straight lines and it's not because working in straight lines means you don't potentially cause as much damage it's the style of damage um, anytime you touch the paint you take chances and risks and you do cause damage to some measure um, to the body so when you wash in a straight line your defects are more directional. The circular defects are very easy to spot. Defects that are in a straight line are harder to see. They're not quite as unsightly. Uh, the exception to the straight line rule, which is more uh, a modification to it, is when I get to the edge of, say, the hood, you'll see me cut across perpendicular to the the, the direction I was washing because if you do this over your edges you will miss debris. The same thing's going to happen around the wheel wells. There's no way to wash straight unless you're getting sloppy with your wash mitt and you're hitting the tire and the wheel and obviously we know you won't want to do that.
after washing the car, but before drying, another step in our chemical decon is a chemical designed to dissolve ferrous contaminants. So that would be like iron particles and whatnot. That's yeah, pretty much it. Iron steel. It's a thicker uh, chemical. So you can see here, and you can come on in, Mike, on my hands. It is a, a like a gel, very thick. So it's designed to dwell for a while. And we're gonna go back over it with our wash mitts to agitate it once again. Once that's done, the chemical decon is complete. It takes a while to go back through and do this, but it pays big dividends because it allows us on many new cars to not, we're not forced to do a mechanical decon. And ultimately, uh, well for our clients, it ultimately is going to save them some money on paint correction. Unless the car's already hammered. If the car's already hammered, it's not going to make much of a difference, whether you chemically decon or um, mechanical, uh, I'm sorry, chemical and mechanical, or if you do just chemical. If it's already toast, it's already toast.